Some, so something else I wanted to point out. Um, so what does it mean to be an interior designer? Um, I mean, it's not, I, I feel like what it really is, is not, or maybe it is, maybe it is creating a, uh, an interesting mood or an atmosphere for a space or something. But if you go to the National Council of Interior Design Qualifications after you graduate and you uh, get your certification to practice interior design, you're not saying to that to the board, hey, I'm going to create really cool um, spaces and moods and um, atmospheres. You're saying to the board, I'm going to use interior design to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. So that's what it means to be an interior designer, to use your interior design skills and tools to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. So that's just something to think about. And um, so undergrads, like like first year undergrads, like um, that's not something that should be evident on your boards right now. Like your boards should be equal parts, Revit, Rhino, Illustrator, and Photoshop. Um, and possibly InDesign, if you want to do InDesign. I can tell you, if you're doing four boards like this in Illustrator, it's going to crash quite a bit. So if you want your file to not crash, do it in InDesign. Um, but grads, um, you guys have to do everything straight out of Revit. So yeah, four boards need to be printed out of Revit. And that second Revit file upload, those four sheets should be apparent in your file. Like they, they should be there, and it should be what you printed out of. And if some of the what you place, like TIFFs or JPEGs, are missing, try to link them in, or try to try to put them in the folder too. But if some of those are missing, that's fine. Um, but the sheets should be there. So tips, I put some tips on there for for the, oops, for the undergrads. The tip was, feel free to storyboard out. Take thirty minutes, storyboard out your um, final project, and that might help you. For the grads, it was. Don't do detail lines. <laughs> I showed detail lines last Friday. Um, that is, yeah, and it will confirm like that's that's not the way to do things because if you move parts of your model, your detail lines are not going to move with the model, and that's basically me using Revit like it's AutoCAD. Like I'm not using Revit for its BIM. I don't know if you guys remember. I showed you guys the Mac 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 Leamy curve, which points out why BIM is the way to go and why uh, regular CAD is on its way out. Um, because with with regular CAD, we're spending all of our time in construction documents. If we're doing BIM, we're able to spend most of our time in schematic design and design development, which is where we want to spend our time. So, so I was using Revit kind of backwards, where I would be spending most of my time if I'm drawing detail lines in construction documents. So that's um, not the way to do it. Uh, uh, um. All right. So I mean. Maybe you guys are aware of what's expected by now. So grads, four sheets, uh, horizontal with a title block. Undergrads, four boards, either just the clean, uh, what would you call this, footer with the information, or try to adopt the title block to a vertical format if you choose. Uh, it might not look good, but it might, whatever. Trying to experiment with it. Um, yeah, board one, site plan, um, photographs, um, maybe an axon on or, or views, 3D views of your 3D model. OK, so what else can you put on, put on board one? Um, anyone know about this? Other than Will, because I know Will knows about this. <laughs> No, I mean this, like this image in particular. So, um, so like if you guys want to redesign this space, maybe you don't have to go in there and go crazy. Maybe you could think about what it means to rethink the threshold of a door for part of this. So this this is uh, right here in the, in the Eames house in this photo. But this, I mean, I just sketched this. I don't think this is the Eames one. And this I found on Google Images. But every door that, that takes you from the exterior to the interior will have a threshold to keep the water out and the moisture out. So 
that's something that's that's got to be done. Um, yeah, you can't just you don't just have a ground plane and then there's just a door hanging up here. You need a threshold. And then, oh, man. I just gotta say it. I heard I heard from somebody. I heard from somebody that somebody said, and I don't know, like, I'm not giving names, obviously, but somebody said, like, they haven't learned anything all semester. And I, I and I, man, that kind of, <laughs> that just made me go crazy. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so, so I've walked through you guys' studio, and I know for a fact, I talked about this with the undergrads, but I think the grads can use this piece of information. Um, okay, so I already talked about how show more ceiling than ground. So that's something that you see here. Another thing is um, you guys are always putting up interior renderings and screenshots and whatever that's kind of distorted. Um, if you're able to make it a two point perspective instead of a three point perspective, just by even in Photoshop, just are you guys watching? Yes, yes, yes. You guys, you guys are joining the Teams meeting? Yes, OK. Yeah, um, if you correct the vertical lines and make them actually vertical, that's why these photographs read like, like they're amazing. Right, uh, you could tell these aren't just photographs that someone uh, just showed up and, and snapped with their cell phones just randomly. Um, okay. So second board, straightforward, right? It's it's your drawings, um, and they they shouldn't be placed randomly. Um, which I mean. We all in the in the field sometimes when we place drawings on our sheets, we, we do them randomly because we're running out of time. But you guys should keep that part of your souls right now. Where you're really conscious of where you're where you're putting your drawings on your sheets and, and don't lose that yet because someday you probably will, but keep that for now. Um, and then sheet three. Um, so I'm showing this as a as a color coded thing, which um, I think Revit has the capability to do quite well, and I don't. So, anyways, so maybe that, or, or this can be the same views with your design over them, or something like that. Um, but, but your design, like, and I did this actually. I don't know if it was this morning or last night, but I, I just, um, I was thinking if it were me, I would maybe do like little alien spaceships that landed in the space, and that they're not like really touching it too much. There's just like touching it at a few points, like maybe like little tripod type things. But um, yeah, that would maybe be, be my, maybe be my way of doing something non intrusive in the space. Um, or maybe I wouldn't even change the way anything looks and I would just be like, OK, this is going to be two occupants in this space and I'm going to make fire rated walls and I'm going to make sure the, the curtain wall is now fire rated. And I would say that's my way of doing interior design, maybe on this particular, if, if that's something to explore. And I think that would be like a really powerful and subtle project, um, which I don't see a lot of people doing. So I just wanted to throw this idea out there and this idea out there. Um, yeah, do one of those. And then I sketched this on the on the um, CRAD handout just to, I didn't give you guys all this text in the handout. I just gave you guys this. But if you guys want this, you could reference um, Building Construction Illustrated by Fra Francis Ching. And then maybe if you want to go even deeper, maybe reference Building Codes Illustrated by Francis Ching. Um, and then board for maybe an iterative design process and then enlarged plans and sections. Um, and an iterative process can even be you're exploring what it would mean to perhaps look at the grid of the eames and and if you messed with it enlarged it elongated it what what that would mean to the structure and the space and what that would mean to the things that get bigger because you're having more load going on each footing from from the structure because it's more spread apart now um, so maybe that might be something to explore for the iterative or it can be axons of, of different types of designs or whatever else you think works with the level required from the document you got for me. Um, circulation is not some magical thing that happens when a designer draws a dashed line. We need to give care to the way the forms that accommodate the circulation are designed and consider how they're constructed through our drawings. If we don't figure it out, someone else whose main concern is probably to cut costs will do it for us. So 
If you guys don't figure this out, someone else is going to, and it's going to look like crap. Maybe. Or maybe it'll look amazing. Who knows? All right, that's all I got. Um,